All right, welcome to the Energizing America podcast, where we talk all things energy and why we need it in our business communities and our lives. Excited to sit down with Mr. Gabriel this morning. Uh, well, I, I guess it's afternoon already, Gabriel, but yeah, welcome to the podcast, but more importantly, to Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to be here. I mean, we haven't come over here, so it's a great experience, and we're glad because we got a great notice. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun day, wasn't it? It was. It was. Fun morning. Fun morning. So a little bit cold for us, but <laughs> a little bit cold for you. Yeah, it was. W- did you check the temperature when you left the hotel? No, I didn't. Okay, but I think I just noticed um, as we came in down here, it was like fifty-eight or sixty-two degrees. Uh, I think so. At what's What's it normal for you? Uh, eighties. 70s. 70s, 80s. Yeah, my, the temperature in my house is 73, so okay, that's what I probably prefer. Temperature inside the house? Inside the house, yeah. You know, up here in northern Minnesota, when it gets to be summer, we set our AC at 68. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because we're hot at 70. Yeah, you're, <laughs> we're, 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 you're we're like red. more of the cold than us. So. Yeah. So, uh, Gabriel, you've been at Westcom for how long? Um, I've been five years. Five years in a month, probably. Yeah, five years, one month. Down yeah. in Carlsbad, New Mexico, you and Fernando are our longest serving. Yeah, we're the ones that have more time over there. Yeah, and not that's unusual. In the oil field in Carlsbad, it's hard to hang on to guys. So why are you still working at Westcom? I find a pretty nice place working with you because I have worked like eight or nine companies down there. And I never felt so comfortable working with the people like in Westcom. We got these uh, great bosses, great people. Every time they're trying to make you feel good, make you feel better. So we're, we're being comfortable there. So even even though there's been a few changes in the managers over that five years, you've seen quite a bit of, of a change. That hasn't bothered you too much. You've you've seen the same theme or the same feeling every time that the company truly does care? Yeah, because um, they got the perspective you, you want it to. You, you have your... Your company already settled how you ever you want it. So whichever comes to work, it got to work under what you think the company has to be. So the, the culture, what you're saying is yeah. you've seen that the culture has stayed the same at Westcom. Like it's the leadership culture is still there and that's what you like. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, to feel pretty comfortable because we got this communication with you and with the uh, supervisors over there. It's pretty good. You don't get that with another companies yeah. that I have seen over there. The eight or nine companies you're saying it was harder to get a hold of the boss or yeah. the foreman. Yeah, even though uh, you try to talk to them, they they just keep on working. I mean, put your hard. head down, go back to work. Yeah, <laughs> and and maybe at Westcom there's a little bit more like tell me more, and then yeah, it's and, more like hum, human, more human. human. Yeah, interesting. I I I certainly like I said this morning feel like that's what Westcom has been all along, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you sometimes when you own something or you're really into something, you can be misinterpreting what it actually is, right? Just because mm-hmm. I want it to be that way, I can think it's that way. So it's really awesome for me when I get to sit down with employees and they tell me that's how it is yeah. <laughs> because it th- that means that it's working, right? You started for us five years ago. What were you doing at that time? Uh, when I first started, I started doing Rustabout. So I came doing Rustabout. I started like a pusher and we were working for maintenance in Marathon. Okay. Doing a lot of work there. So you were a pusher on the roustabout side of things. And a pusher, for those who don't know, that means that you're like in charge of your truck and you got a couple guys under you. Yeah, we got a crew of two, these three guys and I was uh, in charge of these two guys and I was in charge of the truck doing the maintenance and wherever they send me. Okay. So when you're you're doing the maintenance work, you got a couple guys that you're working with. It was always the same crew that you were with? Uh, yeah, sometimes for months it was the same crew. Sometimes we just change people, you know, the oil field is like that. Yeah. Just come in, some guys come and go. But yeah, we got, I see, a, I have seen a lot of people go and come back. So yeah, at yeah. Westcom you're seeing, yeah, you've Westcom. seen people go and then they come back. Come back and some of the, they left and a lot of people, I mean, a lot of employees have come and go. Yeah. We've had a lot of turnover at Westcom, right? I think like you said, in the oil field, there's just an there's a certain amount of that that just happens, right? Yeah. People, especially roast about hands. It's difficult to find your yeah find your spot, right? Um, maybe as a pusher, it's a little easier to find your spot because you have some authority and you're managing a little bit. Mm-hmm. What what did you like about the roast about end? Like what got you in the oil field to begin with? Um, I had work uh, on 2014. I came to work here at the oil field uh, there in Carlsbad doing maintenance and. 
I went back to Mexico and then try, I come back to work to El Paso. And then they called me to come and work back to Carlsbad. So I think the money is the most important thing in there because mm -hmm. in the oil field you get a lot of money. And I think that's the thing when I come back. I wanted some give my family a little bit more. So did you grow up in Mexico? I did grow up in Mexico. Okay, so you grew up in Mexico, came across, uh, went into the oil field. How did you know to go to the oil field? Had somebody told I, you? I got a cousin there. Okay, so you had a cousin yeah. who told you, hey, come over here, make some money. And then after a while, you go back to Mexico, and then you decide, hey, come back over yeah, to El Paso. Got, yeah, to El Paso to work, and then my daughter was born there in El Paso, and then I wanted to come to, to New Mexico to make some money for a better life for my family, too. That is so awesome, Gabriel. I think mm -hmm. you're you're doing all the right things. So you said the oil field has more money. With that more money comes a bit more expectations, right? Like you work yeah. a lot. How many hours were you? What, what's normal? Uh, the normal for us is now is uh, we're doing 50 hours. But right when, now. when we started at Westcom, when I started at Westcom in 2018, I, we, we were 90 hours, 800 hours. We were really busy. Yeah, that, those were incredible times. You yeah. guys would do 90 hours. My heart would skip a beat. I'd call Kevin and Tom. That's too many hours. <laughs> yeah. That's way too many hours. <laughs> Slow down a little bit, no? Yeah, well, it's it's difficult to have a family life when you're working 90 hours a week. It's yeah. hard to find time with your daughter, right? Yeah. Um, so now you're doing 50. You also have moved from Roustabout to environmental as a what we call a field tech. But field tech. What is, what's that work like? Um, well, what I'm performing now is, uh, I'm environmental tech. So we go to facilities, do ABOs, we check the facilities and then we do OGI, which is, it's just, um, we check for gas leaks on infrared cameras. So an environmental field tech, you head out to a site, you do an AVO, which is a fancy bunch uh, of words. A, uh, audio, visual and olfactory inspection. Yeah. So the AVO inspection, really in essence, is you go on the pad and you're doing a look around to see if there's any obvious issues. Yeah. Right? Gas leaks or, or uh, liquid leaks. Okay. So gas or liquid leaks. Whatever is wrong in the facility, we try to uh, report it or fix it. So you try and fix it before you, you have to report it, right? Yeah. But then you also try and do a first attempt on a fix. Yeah, on a repair. Okay. And are you able to do some of those? Yeah, we are. Uh, they they have trained us to do some some uh, repairs on some of the back pressure valves, um, gas leaks, T hatches. Some of those are common problems, right? Yeah, like common the, problems. The thief hatches. They'll have those gasket in there that sometimes needs to be cleaned and or replaced. Mm -hmm. you Internals know. and everything. We replace everything, and clean them, okay. and verify they they're no longer leaking too. So and and as you're doing that for the producer, then they can continue to operate that well if they if they don't fix these things they get in pretty big trouble from the government right yeah cuz we got planes in uh looking for look for gas leaks too so for the from the government so isn't that incredible that they can fly a plane <laughs> yeah. over a well site and they can see they can see everything yeah they can see if there's a gas leak and then find the producer yeah that's why we're over there first so we cover everything so do you uh when you're in Carlsbad with your family are you ever tempted to go back to Mexico? I was at the first. Uh, what every, everybody says, um, I'm coming from one year, two years, and then go back, make some money, go back. But that never happens. You always stay. You, you, I haven't heard it from every every single person that says that, and every single person is, is there. Why do they stay? Better life. Better life. I mean, Better future. Better future for and you and your kids, so. For you and your kids, which is important, right? Like yeah. you, you want you want your daughter to have a nice life. Yeah, have the best life. Yeah. How old is she? She's six. She's going to be seven on June 11. And what's her name? Uh, Helen. And I think I've I've met her at one of our company events, if uh, I remember correctly. Uh -huh. But boy, you know, it's funny. The kids are hard for me to keep track of because there's a lot of kids <laughs> yeah, at Westcom. You know, um, when you think about where Westcom is... What do you think about going forward after the announcement? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm pretty excited because uh, it gives us an opportunity to to grow as individuals too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, are you were you surprised to be asked to come up to Duluth? For I was very surprised. I said I watched the list and then I see well, supervisor from uh, Bacon, supervisor from Twin Ports. Or, well, a lot of people that are above me, so I didn't think you were going to put me here. So 
it was a good thing for me. Yeah. It was very exciting. Well, um, I hope one thing that you've learned after working with me for, you know, almost six years, well, f over five years anyways, we don't put much difference on a, mm -hmm. on a title. We put the difference in the person. Mm -hmm. And what you've shown is a desire to do good and to be committed and flexible and urgent, all those things we talked about this morning. So when we thought about who do we want on this team to help us tell the story of an ESOP, your name came right to the top of the of the mind because those are the things that you've done during the entire five years you've been here. I mean, you could still be a roast about pusher, mm -hmm. but we asked you to help out over doing the direct report for the environmental field tech and you took it. You know, there was... Um, that says something about you when you're willing to embrace those opportunities. And Gabriel, if you continue to embrace those opportunities, you will do well. And your seven-year-old, soon-to-be seven-year-old daughter has a very, very bright future. You know, um, mm -hmm. the fact that you're up here in Duluth, Minnesota, out of the 105 people that you have down in Carlsbad, New Mexico, says just that with mm -hmm. you. I, I hope you've found Duluth to be kind of a cool spot. <laughs> It's really cool. I appreciate you uh, taking the opportunity for us to come here. Yeah. And yeah, Duluth is a pretty nice place. What did you think of the Westcomers who work up here? Did you meet any of them? Yeah, I met some of them. I don't remember their names because I'm really bad for names, but they are pretty cool guys. And uh, one thing that I like from the shop is an excellent condition, clean, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why sometimes I go down to New Mexico then and panic about the shop condition? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now I know. <laughs> yeah, we we get a lot of comments from our clients here in the Twin Ports about our shop and how clean it is and how organized everything is. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we try to do that everywhere, but it's hard. Down That's in hard. Carlsbad, you know, everyone is so busy. Yeah. It's just hard to get people to even back in sometimes, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It can can be hard to do. But what about the people? When you when you met the people here, you said they're pretty good guys. Do you feel like that's the same case down in New Mexico? Just pretty good guys that work at Westcom? Yeah, pretty much the same. Pretty much the uh, I think I haven't met a lot of guys here, so I don't know how, how they work, but I think they're tough guys and they work rough, so Yeah. You know that it's hard to survive at Westcom yeah. if you're not a hard worker. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> you you tend to get pushed out. Yeah, I tried to probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if you, you know how that is, if you're on a job and there's a guy just hanging out, not doing his part, mm -hmm. and everyone else is producing, you're like, what are you doing, Bob? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Go somewhere else. We don't we don't yeah, have yeah, those yeah. kind of people, you know? Yeah, I think we have created a great team. For and, sure. And a lot of tough workers. So the ones that are here now is because they need to be here. Yeah, we went through some sometimes where we had to get rid of people. Right. Yeah. You remember uh, during COVID when we had to get rid of some people? Yeah, there were. We were like, uh, I don't remember, we were like 120 yep. people there before COVID. And then after COVID, we were like six or seven guys at the shop. It was scary. Yeah. For but a while. It went good for us because we never stopped working. So, And the reason why you didn't stop working is because you had already shown the customer Mm -hmm. that you're the best one, right? So they, they kept saying, what do we got to do to make sure we keep Gabriel busy? How do we keep this core team of people busy? And then when the market recovered, we're able to build upon that, and now we're back up to 105 people. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when you were working on the roustabout end, that's where we were the busiest. You remember that? we? Yeah. That's pretty much all we did was roustabout. And now we do the roustabout, the electrical, the environmental, and yeah, the automation, don't. so it's pretty cool to see that. What do you... um? Do you think the team down in the Permian is going to understand what an ESOP is? Yeah, I think so. And then I think that uh, probably they, they're going to try to work more for Westcom, try to make look Westcom look better. And see if they can increase their... Yeah, they can. Yeah. I mean, everybody's owner, no? Yeah. Well, and, and some <laughs> people like be... you... I think when I checked this morning, did I did I say what number you were as far as longevity? Um, I'll probably be the seventh, 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 eighth, probably. Yeah, seventh or eighth person. So you're a hundred percent vested almost in Westcom, yeah, right? Almost. So as a as an employee owner, your stock that you now own is literally yours at a, almost a hundred percent. So that's pretty cool. That's powerful when you stay with a company for a while. Yeah. Do you do you ever have just a burning question that you wish you could ask your leadership team or your owner? At Westcom, your old owner. 
Mm. <laughs> no, I think every 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 part was covered, and well, I, what I understand it's it's every covered. So yeah, awesome. What do you think about your uh, next ten years? Keep working in environmental. Do you want to keep learning more about that end, or do you like to see other things? Um, well, like I started here, I started doing some maintenance, and then go back to do building construction. Now I'm environmental, probably move somewhere else to cover some other stuff so I keep learning and I keep growing up. How old are you? 28. 28. Oh, 27, but 28 in September. Okay. So 27 going on 28, and you've already done how many years in the oil field in total? In total, probably six and a half. Okay. Six and a half, seven. So yeah, you're you still, um, isn't that crazy how much there is to learn in the oil field? There's, uh, I mean, you never stop learning. I have seen people that have 20, 30 years in oil field and they say it's never stopping. So incredible opportunity for people Yeah. who, when I'm in Carlsbad, sometimes I'll be at a gas station or at a restaurant. And I think to myself, I can't believe that these people, some of these people aren't out in the oil field. There's so much opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so much opportunity for money. There's so much opportunity for learning, for growing, meeting people. Mm -hmm. I mean, aren't the people that you meet just awesome in the oil field? Mm -hmm. You work a lot with a particular client of ours. His name is Isaac. Mm -hmm. And that dude is one of the coolest people ever. Yeah. And I have often thought through my time at Westcom in the last 10 years, how many awesome people I've been able to meet that I otherwise wouldn't have. And Isaac being one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a guy who... Went to college and came out of college, wasn't sure what he was going to do with his life. Ended up over there in Carlsbad doing, you know, leading the Eldar program for that client. And he's just an awesome guy. Yeah. Uh, do you deal a lot with him? Yeah, we meet every Tuesdays. Okay. We meet with him for an hour, hour and a half, and we discuss of work. He's a good guy. He's an excellent guy. He's, I haven't met a guy like him too. Yeah. And there's more of them out there, right? Mm -hmm. So we just will continue to run across them as we go forward in our pathway. But I think it, whatever you do, you know, whether it's an oil field or not in your future, I obviously mm -hmm. hope it's an oil field and <laughs> I hope it's Westcom, Gabriel. But I think, it, you know, you can remember those things that you have learned along the way that being committed to a company that fits you, like you, you said, mm -hmm. Westcom fit you, right? That's like the most important piece in order to be successful in life. Because I don't know if you look at yourself as a successful run, but I sure hope you do. Mm -hmm. Because I certainly do. You've you've changed your entire family tree. You were living in Mexico and not sure about your future. And you were brave enough to come over here and you're living in Carlsbad. Mm -hmm. You got a beautiful daughter, a wife, and you're raising your family there. You got a bright future. You're learned a ton from environment, uh, roused about into environmental folks like you don't quit. And I think over the next 20, 30 years, we're going to, we're going to see a lot of growth out of you. So whatever you do, keep it up because it's, you've been successful. Yeah. I'm trying to be successful and I'm trying to keep it up and every learn to learn and take opportunities. I mean, the a chance for me to come over here, uh, just open and I jump, jump in. And is that what you would tell a younger kid? Of course. Every every single time I try to talk to somebody that is younger than me, hey, if you grab an opportunity, just grab it. You never know when it's not coming back. Yeah. And don't be scared of it, right? No, you got to take a risk. Take a risk. Come in there and, and figure it out. And you want risk. I mean, you had to <laughs> You probably still have family in Mexico, right? Yeah, my mom is over there. She lives over there. I go once in a while, but I mean, I can help her here too, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Gabriel, thanks for sitting down and chatting about your little experience <laughs> at Westcom. And more importantly, thanks for coming up here to Duluth to uh, well, spend the you. exciting day with us. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, let's do this, hey? Yeah, Energize America, no? Yeah, Energize <laughs> America. Thanks. <laughs>